So for working in the burnt umber, I've got a round brush. This is a, a sable brush, and I've also just got a flat head brush. And they're quite small, but it will enable me for when I'm painting the squares of the windows, just to very simply block them in with the square edge, the flat edge of this brush. But then when there's detailed work for like the posts or any of the parts on the tree, I can use the round brush. So the round is great for details and the square with the flat end is really good, especially for more architectural work. So off screen, I've just got a pot of water and I'm just gonna dip in my brush just before I start, just to add a bit of flow to the actual acrylic paint. And then because I've got the two, you can see how I'll work between the two, holding them both as I paint. So again, I'm just dipping into that water to keep it, you know, flowing quite nicely. When you work just with the burnt umber, because it's got that browny undertone, it's very handy for you to start to get your eyes adjusted to the scene that you're actually painting. And as I put in the browny tones there, I can see that's definitely too brown for that particular window. It's going to be a lot more bluer in tone. But when I paint it onto this one, I can see, oh, actually, that's quite nice with that brown undertone to it. So it's just a nice way of just you know, feeling your way into the painting. Again, when we look at this window in the corner, I think that's very, that's going to be very blue. This window here is kind of obliterated from the tree. I'm just going to um, guess where it would be. Again, you can practice just working between the two brushes. And also practice when you've got um, a flat edge brush. You don't always have to use it this way, so you have a flat mark. You can turn it onto its edge and practice you know, getting finer lines with it. Start to see that can it be a very handy little brush just for you know getting that nice a nice crisp edge very very easily. I like the mix between the round and the flat edge because otherwise if you just use a flat or you just use a round your brush marks can become you know quite samey. I'm just going to use to hold in the two brushes at the same time. It's a really good skill to get used to. If you ever move on to oil painting or you've tried oil painting before, you'll often see artists holding you know four or five brushes in their hand at the same time. And this is because with the oil paint, you try and keep your brushes uh, clean. And instead of keep on washing them all the time, you just actually keep the paint on the brush. So it's best to keep a few working all at the same time. With acrylics you can keep on washing them so you don't have to have as many brushes when you're holding on to them. Oops. Working uh, this way is quite a good way, actually, to illustrate the different consistencies of paint. Usually when I'm painting, I'll have 
the pallet on the flat and work from there. But you can start to see, because this is a heavy body acrylic, and I'm just diluting it with water, that if it goes too thin, you know, it starts to run down the actual pallet. The really nice consistency is when it's just fluid, but it's not kind of moving down this way when I paint it onto an area. So it has got quite a nice coverage, but it just flows really nicely. If I put too much water on, see how that's running like that. Let me show you on here. It's a, it's a bit too watery. So it's quite a nice way if you've just got anywhere you can just prop up a palette and just practice mixing your paints together to try and get that consistency just with water so it holds on the vertical, doesn't run down, and that's a really nice consistency for this stage of the painting. Often when you're first starting painting, the actual consistency of the paint that you're using is really critical and you can be so close to getting it spot on or it can just go completely wrong depending on a tiny amount of water. So it's a really good thing just to practice. Okay, you notice how I use the edge of the brush to start with, and then I can use the squareness of it just to filling areas. And then when it starts to get a bit more detailed in here, just swap to that round brush so you can get a real sharp edge. So again, I'm just dipping into the water and just mixing it in. And areas that I know are definitely going to be darker, you can afford to go a bit heavier with the paint. But then these areas here, which we know are darker in tone, but we might not want to go as heavy because the actual hue that we're using isn't going to be spot on. You can just, you know, water down the paint a bit. If it goes a bit fine, grab a bit of paper towel and just take that back. You can see how we're just building up the tones of the painting. And these little parts here, see this little um, horizontal line here, the edge of the wall, the edge of this seat, is really handy in painting and something it's often good to look out for because what that does on this darker tone of this tree here is it just gives a grounding for this whole area of the cafe. So the cobbled path that's going to be coming through here it's nice to have that little bit of a gap there so you can put a darker edge in. And I'll probably paint it even darker than it actually is in the reference image we're working from because it just helps to send your eye in and then stop. You know, you know you're going to be bringing the viewer's eye and then it stops and focuses on this part. And then you'll start to see when we're getting, say, darker in here. how it starts to bring more of that focus in um, to this area of the painting. So I'm just squinting my eyes at the actual scene and saying, where are those tones? Where are those darker tones in the actual picture? 
some of those first areas you put down, you might want to go and reinforce now because you've got something to base them against. Again, just having that little piece of dark on the corner, it's going to be so handy when the yellow goes on to this blind here. And it's just looking out for those little points where you've got a space where you can put a dark next to a light. Now with the round brush, then we can start putting a bit of detail on the tree, just because it's a good dark shape for us to judge against. So if the colours aren't exactly right, that doesn't matter, it's just looking at that tone, getting those shapes drawn in. Here you can start to see how when we add the whites as well, it's got a real darkness on um, this cafe next door, but then you've also got the lights of the tree branches that are going to be coming over the top of that. It's really good to see that there's going to be a light branch that's going to break over the darker area um, of this cafe. The bottom branches, I can afford to paint uh, this direction because I'm essentially just you know, blocking in the shape. But when you get to some of the thinner branches, it's often easier to paint up towards them so you get a thinner edge of the actual brush stroke as it gets towards the end of the branch. So if it comes up there, you just kind of, you know, it, it branches off and it tapers off as it gets towards uh, the top of the tree. So again, you see how I've got a little bit of a negative space there that's dark next to the light and you know, there's dark here next to the next tone. So there's all these little shapes that are around the actual painting that don't seem like much and you don't really notice them when you're going into the colour. But when you're just concentrating on the drawing, they can really start to establish the actual scene that you're going to be painting. Okay, that's great. So in the next part of the tutorial, we start to introduce our lightest lights and bring some colour into the scene. This is Will Kemp from Will Kemp Art School.